Yep. Thank you. So welcome again, uh, officially welcome to the cross company community talk hashtag C3 call. I'm Achim from Daimler. And along with me, there are a couple of hosts from other uh, companies. We will see who is who is your host today uh, later on. But first of all, um, probably you are a community manager, maybe you are an internal community manager. And we all know that communities connect people. And we uh, from different companies thought, why not connect also the community managers in companies internally um, to bring them together to share their learnings, to share their experiences. And that's why we are here now uh, today. And that's what we want to do with you. And we have a very interesting topic today, uh, which uh, touches on the core business capabilities of organizations. They are all asking how can we build them up? How can we develop them in these times uh, when everyone is doing home office and everything is virtual? Um, we will be looking in communities and software development. And I think we can a lot, even if you are not software development, we can a lot, uh, uh, we can learn a lot from those communities. But um, yeah. Before I dive deeper into the topic, some uh, preliminary um, notes. First of all, uh, we are in Teams, Microsoft Teams, uh, the first time for today. So um, maybe everyone in the chat, um, maybe you can post a one if you are familiar with Teams or post a two if you are not familiar with Teams. So we can then show you some basic functions. So can you use the chat? The chat is uh, below. Have you discovered the chat? Okay, many ones, but ones, some, some, twos. some twos as well. Okay, so um, uh, Simon, do you want to share your screen or should I share my screen to show the functions? Oh, uh, I can share, just a moment. Can you see this? Okay, you should see the uh, your video images. Uh, Teams has a very like uh, easy interface. Um, you can just turn off your camera and your microphone here. It would be good if you have a noisy background. Later on, if you have the talks from the two community managers, that you just turn off the microphone and then uh, turn it on if you want to raise a question or in the discussion round. Then you won't need the screen sharing capability, I think, only the community managers who will present. Uh, then you have this raise hand feature here. Uh, if you have any questions, you can post it in the chat. You can raise your hand at any time. Um, also in the discussion round afterwards, we have a chat moderation. So uh, if you can post your question, but if you want to raise your hand, you will come up to stage and uh, activate your video then, and we will put you on stage and you can ask your question. Um, then we have the, the chat over here. You can use this to discuss, to push uh, <coughs> links, uh, to give applause to the to the speakers if you want to, um, and so on. And besides, you have also the participant list. So if you click on that, you see all the uh, participants. At the moment, we have 38. I think there will still uh, a few people coming. If someone is, has a noisy background, I will turn you on mute. And um, if you want to say something, you can unmute yourself afterwards. So that's it, I think. Wonderful, Simon. So I will switch to presentation mode um, to show you um, the next slide. We uh, you have to share. Yes. I uh, stole you the sharing. Uh, okay. So I share my whole uh, desktop. Um, okay. Okay. So. That's us. We are your hosts. Can you see the presentation already? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what you can see from here, there is Simon, there is Katrin, there is Rebecca, um, Hardy, Stephanie, uh, the other Steffi, and Mo Moni. Uh, we are from Bosch, from Scheffler, from uh, ZF, from Continental, Siemens Healthy near Daimler and Cognion. Um, so we are from different companies. We put all our forces together and um, yeah, we, we try to find the best speakers and to, to, to offer you a diverse um, uh, range of uh, topics in this call. If you want to join us, you can think about it, uh, then just contact us. We are also always 
um, keen on welcoming new um, partners who organize this call together with us. So um, next thing, I will dive into that very shortly because you've already seen it maybe in the invitation or on our landing page. Um, there are some legal boundaries here. We can talk as we like about collaboration, digital collaboration, the methods, the tools we use, the methodolog myth uh, methodology, the mindset, the skill set, whatever. We can talk all about this, but we shouldn't talk about what concerns um, our companies uh, like products, prices, competitors or uh, providers. We shouldn't touch any of these topics because that may land us in some trouble altogether. But usually we're not into any trouble here, but we are looking very enthusiastically in our topics. And these are our, our topics today. Uh, we have two uh, very great showcases and guests here. The first one is from DATEV. Um, it's about the software craft community at DATEV. And the second one is um, from Continental. It's the software academy that they have. Both very interesting. So we have about 10 minutes presentations here. Then we will have five minutes for questions and answers each for each case. And afterwards, we can have a discussion. Um, it's all approximately of about 10 minutes or so. What we want to um, talk about that later, we, uh, later after the showcases, we want to give you a sneak preview of our next C3 call. Um, oh, there is some noise here. <laughs> uh, that's great because um, there should be some uh, drums here because we will, <laughs> we will have a mini online bar camp. But I'm not telling you more about it here. Um, let's see for that later. So now we can have the first showcase and I'm handing over to uh, Lati and to Andreas Fischer uh, from DATEV and I think they will say a few words about uh, each of them, about themselves. So Jürgen and Andreas, um, I'll stop sharing, you will take over. Yes, we will do. Mm -hmm. So here we are. Thank you very much for uh, the introduction. Uh, my name is Andy Fischer. I'm from a company called DATEV. And um, yes, DATEV is a cooperative for tax consultants, auditors, and lawyers. We have more than over 40,000 cooperative members and around about 8,000 employees. And um, every month, for example, just to know what we're doing, we calculate the wages and salaries of over two, 12 uh, million employees in Germany. Approximately 1,000 employees of our company are software developers. And in the next minutes, we will talk about the internal community for them. So, um, Lati, just mm -hmm. introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> and I'm Lati. Um, I'm learning coach since about one and a half year. And before I was mainframe developer for about 28 years. I'm a part of the community for five years and member of the organization team for meanwhile about three years. And now we will tell you about the purpose of the community. It's an internal community for all people in DATEV interested in software development, regardless whether it's the profession or not. Another purpose is learning from and with each other because it made it makes much more fun than learning alone. Connecting people and a lot of networking is also very important. To ask somebody you know is easier than to ask somebody you don't know. The craft in the community name stands for a certain mindset. As a software developer, it is helpful to treat the job as a craft, like the stonemason masters did it in the Middle Ages. They learned new things and taught the things they learned before other masters. Being proud of what you are doing okay. and therefore taking care that the piece of work one is doing will be good at the end. Share your knowledge, uh, share your knowledge others, try to become better day by day 
and strive for technical excellency. Yes, and um, even it's only about seven years, we have a long history comparing to those things happened in software development. With the community was founded in 2013. And in the first years was solely driven by me and my and the first follower I had, a, a colleague called Daniel. And all talks in the community were given by us. After a couple of, after those two years, um, we just started introducing um, an organization team to organ organize those code retreats uh, at DATEV. We will later explain what code retreats are. And um, we did a lot of work convincing people to give talks to the community because it was like it always is. The first attendees just came to listen. Nobody wanted to share. They were frightened to be that somebody would laugh about them or so, so, something like that. And we always told the management how worthy a community is to the company to get their support right from the beginning when we founded that. And um, about three years or three and a half years ago, we founded a team of volunteers to drive the community itself. That was the point when Lucky came into place. And this team grows up to uh, almost 15 people right now who drive the community. Now I will tell you about, our, uh, about several activities of our community. So first we have the meetups. So that's one to X speakers tell the audience about a special topic. Since Corona, we have about 200 attendees every meetup. The second one is the Global Day of Code Retreat, as Andy mentioned. So folks meet on, on a Saturday to code together in five sessions in different pairs in the programming language they want to do worldwide. We host the last three years with more than 90 people, not only programmers, but also ex executives and business developers. Next one is the hands-on session. Somebody shows the others how to, how to do something and they do it the same way, so they keep it better in so they keep it better in mind. Hacker Kegel um, is a kind of meetup we also installed because um, it is very important to get pulses from outside the company. It's monthly and open for everybody. And we do what we want to do. And there's also pizza and beer. We never bowl a single time, but it's the only place where we can invite externals without any access of organization. We also go to internal bar camps and welcome days for new, for new employees and so on, because we want to tell our story as often as we can to people that want to hear it and sometimes also to ones that don't want to hear it. So it's our kind of advertisement. Mob programming is for a whole team. The classical way is that there's a driver dealing with mouse and the keyboard and there's a bunch of navigators who tell the way. So the best of a team goes into the code. The role changes from time to time. Since about two years, we also have a reading group. So somebody suggests a book and the folks that are interested read the book in a few parts, each on their own, and discuss the content later together, sometimes in the beer garden. And we also have a, a kind of cinema. So people meet watching a video at YouTube for example, a recorded talk at a conference and dis uh, discuss about it afterwards. As usual in a cinema, we also offer soft drinks and popcorn. So we have some more activities like, an, like open spaces or a skunk award for bad code. So, and uh, as I mentioned before, we, we, we think that it's very important to have management attention. <coughs> and after five years, we just discovered that we have the management attention. We had uh, always uh, we got money for for uh, for uh, hiring external coaches or something like that. But um, we we were also able to have a birthday party for the fifth birthday of the community, where we get a birthday cake. You see the picture here, and um, we we just we just realized that we had um, managed to convince the top management of the ideas of this community 
because we invited them to every big event and we showed the success of the community that when we doing some recruiting outside and talking about the community or inside the company, uh, having um, having many events, we are just having more than 100 events per year in the community. And so the birthday is at our birthday party, the management came and they gave us a video trolley as a present because we always claimed that we wanted to record our um, events or talks that was before Corona when we are just doing this uh, physically. So and we wanted to record these events and they uh, gave us a video trolley just to record them and to share these videos to the other developers who weren't able to attend the, the uh, event. So um, at the end of our short overview, before we answer your questions, um, just some learnings uh, we had over these uh, seven years now. Well, you cannot enforce or impose a community. Um, a community has to be founded by someone crazy like me, who want to have it in the company and with somebody who has the standing that um, other people attend the first events just to look if this is really interesting what we are doing and a community should provide meaningful content that, that, that sounds funny but it is true but because the people sometimes you can do some we call it esoteric talks just about a programming language nobody would ever use like brain fuck or so it's a really it's a programming language but um, you have to have uh, meaningful content so that the people really uh, attend the other events and sometimes they they turn into a speaker and they say well I have also something very interesting for the community and, and we also do some advertisement for example everybody can have a free t-shirt if he wants to to promote the community at meetups at conferences this we, we, we recently started writing blog posts and we put up posters everywhere where it's allowed and sometimes where, where it isn't. We help people who don't dare to speak in front of many people. We support them when they have to leave their comfort zone. For example, we tell them how to handle the mic. Yes, and um, get the management attention. That's very important um, for all those um, things you want to do with your community. So that was a short overview um, of our community just to keep the time box and um, if you want to connect us um, you can do it via twitter we because we have um, a twitter channel called stc adaptive um, that's where you can connect to the community and you can see what we are doing what what events we have and if you want to co connect to myself um, my twitter handle is fisherman written in this funny german notation and they can reach me on on twitter and mine is my nickname, Lottie, with an underscore and NB3 for Nuremberg. And you can also reach us at LinkedIn or Xing if you want to. So, so are there any questions? Me. Yeah, thank you, bo you both. Um, so we uh, do anybody, does anybody have any questions? If you want to can raise your hand, then we see it on the top or post the questions in the chat. Yes, I think we have some in the chat already. I think there's one of Ulrich. How did the idea of starting the community happen back in 2013 and what triggered it? Uh, it was an external coach who triggered me because there was, um, um, it, at that time, I just wanted to, to, to share all those people um, with a clean code idea and then didn't know how to manage that. And there was a training gone wrong on this topic. And the external coach came into place and he said, well, it's not a good idea if this topic is burned. And he brought the idea of founding a community inside the company to me. And um, so, well, I just started it with his, with his help. And so that was the beginning of this community. That was the thing that triggered me. Okay, are there questions? Otherwise I can also ask uh, a question myself uh, while the others are thinking. Um, 
It looks like uh, the community started in the real world. So we saw a lot of meetings, a lot of gatherings. Did you have all the time along also an online platform where you coordinated? Um, yeah, we were we were forced to at the 10th of March this year. Everybody knows why. Um, so that we had to do all our uh, meetups just uh, virtual in in some uh, video platform. And so, but that was the beginning. Uh, it had also something good inside because um, at that point we realized that when we don't have any business uh, secrets, then we could share these talks to the external community as well. It's it's much easier than it was before, but you know, when you have um, those visitor badges for everybody, it's, it's kind of a trouble and a hustle to get the people into the company, but with a video conference, it's much easier. And we, I think this will change our way um, of the community because, as Lati mentioned, we have more than 200 people in, in each event um, that wasn't, that happened before. This answers the, the question of, uh, I think, Jason. He asked how many people are there in the community, about 200, if I understand no. right? No, no uh, it's, it's fairly hard to, to figure the exact number of people who are really in the community because we don't have a member card or something like that. It's just, um, it's a, a, mail li a mailing list. And in this mailing list, there are around about 900 people registered and they get um, between three and uh, six mails per week. So I think everybody can self-register and self-unregister. So if uh, they were not interested in the community, they were unregister, of course. So it's not so easy to detect who's in the group and who's out of the group. Yes, of course. Yeah. We don't have a member card and uh, we don't. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you have great t-shirts, I see. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ulrich was asking, what is your secret to achieve high engagement from the community members, if <laughs> there are any secrets? Um, well, the secret was, um, I did convince, the, I had to convince some people to, to, to do the first talk, talks in the community because before that only Daniel and me were talking. And that was the, the hardest point to get other faces in the front. Um, and when we just managed that, the people, the, the audition realized that nobody was being loved by the audience and they, everybody was interested in what the people were saying, and uh, so many more um, talks were um, were uh, proposed by by speakers. And now we are in the comfortable situation that we we have about one hundred more than one hundred talks a year um, raised by people proposed by people in the company. So it's the shift because from people leaning back to leaning forward and then stepping in and being active in the community. Yes, and we, we get a, a, a really amount of people who are who are giving talks. Of course, there's a huge amount of people still only listening, but that's okay. That's fa fairly okay, and um, but it's it's good. We are we are very um, we are proud of this situation. There's another question by Jason. He asked, "How do you target who you should invite to the community, or is it just?" open to everyone, like a Facebook group, and who wants to join, joins. It is open to everybody inside the company. So um, we are not caring if it's um, the people's profession to be a software developer, or is it just a hobby, or he's doing it uh, at his spare time. Everybody is welcome, and every every uh, learning is welcome, because we just, we always can learn from each other, as you know. And so we don't uh, especially go to people and say, you are a member of the community and you're not. Everybody's welcome. No. Okay. And there is a question a from question. Ulrich. Um, what is the platform you're using for your community? Um, right now, we, we, we have to use SharePoint. <laughs> um, but um, um, Confluence is raising up at the horizon. So... Um, there will be peace in the future. In the future, we can use uh, Confluence for the for sharing our uh, knowledge with the, with the other community members, and the rest is um, just having Skype sessions or Blue Team sessions for video conference because these mm -hmm. are the only two con uh, video conference software running in, inside our company. 
I think Harry is uh, raising his hand. Yeah. I was impressed uh, about your statement that you cannot enforce or impose a community. And uh, on the other hand, uh, management attention is quite useful. Um, the usual situation is that um, management is rarely accepting the simple statement that you are just a gardener of a community and there's no way of real enforcement and enforcement. So, uh, the, the KPI is very difficult. Uh, have, can you share some experiences about that? We are just we're just in the comfortable situation that no, no, none of the management wanted to have any KPI. We just could um, convince them that um, there cannot be a KPI of a mindset. Mm -hmm. you, you, never, you, you cannot measure if somebody is doing his job good because if, when the software is good, it you do, you do, you cannot say was it the mindset that was making the software good and without any errors or was it just hard work um so we are in the lucky situation that we could convince our top management that there there cannot be a kpi they just have to believe it and they do it and that's really good thank you i like that okay thank you <laughs> Thank you very much. So there are many more questions here. I've, I think it's really great that participants are so interested in your community. But to be fair, I would switch to the other showcase and then maybe come back to the questions uh, afterwards. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the many questions. We will come back to them later. You can thank put you. virtual okay. applause in the chat if you want to. <laughs> Okay, um, so now we have the best case, the Software Academy from Continental, and um, Hannes, are you taking over? I will, yeah. Uh, just give one sec to share, and then we can go start. Okay, so. Go. Okay, I hope you can see my presentation now. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, great. For, uh, thank you for having me. Um, and I want to talk about our software academy at Continental and how we enable software learning. Uh, maybe just a few words about myself, because I think most of you don't know me yet. Um, um, I'm Hannes Hess. Um, yeah, at Continental, obviously. So for, for actually quite a while now, since 2006. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I love learning. So I've been in the learning business, so to say, for the last 10 years and um, worked in, yeah, uh, in our internal education. Um, I, I live and work now in Hanover um, and I'm a guide. Um, I think probably most of you have heard about our guides. <laughs> so I'm doing that uh, yeah, since the beginning, actually, and that's my passion as well. Um, and yeah, I love change. So that's also why I'm a guide, because um, I like new things. I like to try out. Uh, new ways uh, of working, new ways uh, of, of learning. So, um, yeah, and uh, my family keeps me keeps me healthy and balanced, especially in these Corona times. That's that's quite important, I think. Uh, yeah. So yeah, and and of course you're free to link uh, with me on LinkedIn. So if you find me there. Uh, scan the barcode, uh, the QR code. Oh, I think you find it also in the description already. Yeah. Great. Um, so. Before we dive completely in, I would love to run a quick video for you guys, um, uh, which is really great to show at Software Academy. Oops, now it's not running. Oh, wait a second. Sorry about that. Come on. Okay. Doesn't want to. Yeah, it did when, when we tested it. Yeah, it did work. I think it's some something. Okay, now I'm just reloading the page and hopefully it works. Now it seems to be better. Okay. So far, through my access to the Software Academy, I have completed courses on basics of Aspice. Agile, Aspice versus Agile, Kanban, uh, basics of Scrum, cybersecurity, software quality methods and tools, multiple systems, secure boot, cryptography, the Tarva, the threat analyst and risk analyst, and so on. 
my learning experience integrated well into my daily work and strengthen my curiosity for further education. The Software Academy enables me to become a valuable software engineer in a successful Agile team here in Budapest. My learning experience has been wonderful since most of the courses were beautifully animated and content was presented in a very understandable way. The Software Academy enables me to become more effective in software development as it allows me to understand the architecture well. My learning experience has been exciting and mind-opening. I really like that I have a place where I have all courses at one spot. My learning experience has been great and it has improved my knowledge in software development. The Software Academy enables me to become a better team player and a strong individual with a good know-how on almost all aspects of software engineering. All right. So yeah, just uh, wanted to give you a quick glimpse into uh, what we do. And um, yeah, so I think um, let's dive in here. Um, so why why is software learning important? I think that's that's really kind of the, the question. Why why are we there? Um, if, as you can see, especially in the automotive business, but this also goes for a lot of other uh, industries, uh, software is on the rise. I mean, we see that here in cars uh, with uh, in the past, almost no software, uh, we are going to a big portion of software in cars. And also, of course, cloud services, software as a service, uh, which are getting more and more integrated. Um, and that, of course, uh, sparks the need for uh, having, of course, people who can develop that software and having software engineers. So um, that's that's one of the reasons why we have the Software Academy. And, and the question is, uh, who is it for? And, and a lot of people think first maybe oh, for software engineers, of course, yeah? Um, but uh, actually, it's it's really for everyone. Um, so really want to have this for everyone in Continental. Uh, of course, um, for software engineers, everybody who works in the software development field already, um, this is a great way to upskill and to to learn new things and to to uh, yeah to improve um, your knowledge. And um, that's that's of course um, a big target group. But also, um, there are other people who work uh, in, in software-related areas like IT, which is not necessarily probably connected to yeah, automotive development, um, but also have a good software understanding who would, would might want to kind of do a sidestep into, into software development um, as well um, in more detail and things like that. Uh, so that's, that's a different, um, also different audience here. And, and then, of course, everybody else, really. Uh, so because... Um, there are a lot of people out there who have an understanding about software who maybe work in a completely different field. Um, I'm actually one, one example. I mean, I mean, I work in learning, um, but I also, I mean, I, I can code a little bit and so on. And I, I so this is actually um, for, yeah, for, for those people who, who really want to learn software, want to move into a new area, maybe build a new career on that. And I always like to say everybody can learn software. It's just a matter of if you want to and, and uh, yeah, if you have the mindset for it. And of course, we provide uh, the necessary courses and, and uh, the learning opportunities for that. Um, so and th that brings me to our, to our motto, uh, which is learn, share, teach. Uh, so um, the biggest block, I would say, foundation of it is learning. So, um, so that people can learn from the experience from, from experts and uh, learn how to evolve in, in the software. Uh, but we don't want to stop there. So we want to also in encourage sharing. That means, let's say, if I, uh, if I learned something, um, yeah, we encourage people to share what they learned, uh, share it with the whole community, with the um, with software community. So let's say um, I, I took a great course, which was really helpful. Um, why not go out and um, and promote it and, and say, hey, this, if you know other people, this might be useful too, and really spread the word. Um, or if you find additional material which really complements um, the, the courses we have, uh, yeah, why not share that and, and enhance the learning experience for everybody? And lastly, um, the teach. So um, basically, that means that um, if I'm an expert, I can become a coach and a teacher. Uh, and and uh, I can go out and, and teach everybody else, right? So, and um, that's very important because uh, we have experts who are really great at their field and uh, we want them to share their knowledge. And uh, there's a lot of people who are out, uh, out there who, who like to do that and who, who like to share and, uh, and teach other people and share their knowledge. And, and that's really great. And that's why we, 
we strive for. So we want to have all these three tiers here. And uh, essentially, that's kind of the, the motto here, learn from experts, share and grow with your peers and teach to be a master. Because also when you teach, you learn something again. And, and I, I know this from, from my own experience. So whenever yeah, I, I, I show something to somebody else, I always kind of think about it a little bit differently. And I, I kind of opens up new doors and, and new, um, yeah, new thinking. Uh, so that's, that's really a, a win-win. So, um, Continental is a truly global company. So we are uh, in all, basically all the continents except Antarctica. Um, uh, we have uh, yeah, almost 600 locations. And uh, that's why it's important to have a community because um, of course we need to reach our audience. So the people who wanna learn uh, with Software Academy. So we have to, um, to have a platform where they can find out you know, when, what we offer, uh, when their courses and where they can also share and interact with each other. Um, and that's our community we use uh, for, yeah, for the communication and the collaboration there uh, with all the people out there who want to learn. Um, so, so what do we teach? Um, essentially, the, I mean, these these are uh, four big, I would say, mega trends. I think everybody has heard of from agile to uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, of course, software development itself, obviously, and then cybersecurity, everything is connected to that. So these are, um, yeah, I would say the, the main pillars, but of course we are developing much more, uh, more and more courses in a lot of different areas, and this is growing and growing. And um, yeah, so, so this is, uh, was just a starting point and we are expanding from there. And um, so, and we also uh, want to yeah, teach in a lot, uh, learn in a lot of different ways. Um, there is of course, uh, the classical e-learning, the web-based trainings we have, uh, network peer learning, um, we have webinars, um, you know, virtual classrooms, uh, coaching. Um, when there's no corona, obviously, we also have things like conferences, meetups, um, uh, classroom trainings. Of course, we have that. Um, not now, right now, of course, but, but otherwise, we have micro-learnings. Uh, game, gamified learning is a, is a big new thing, which is coming up right now, and, and that's quite well received um, because it really makes learning fun and engaging, so that's um, that's just some some of the the ways uh, we employ and and, and use uh, with our also with our community. Um, yeah, well, um, we are in difficult times, as you all know. Um, so cor I think Corona has really um, created some yeah some changes for all of us, uh, and uh, maybe three lessons or or three key findings uh, in these times. Um, so, okay, I mean, I guess you have all <laughs> seen that virtual is the new normal. I mean, this is kind of in every presentation these days, uh, but I also put it there because it's very true. Um, and um, yeah, so the thing is, of course, I, I mentioned already, if uh, you cannot meet up in person, you cannot do classroom trainings and all these kind of things anymore, which used to be, I would say, quite a popular form of learning uh, in the past, uh, you cannot do that. So uh, you have to do it in a different way and, and you have to do it in a virtual environment. So. So that's really something uh, where I think we have all moved to uh, very fast to um, do things we used to do in person. Uh, yeah, with Teams, for example, like we do today. Um, and, and this actually works. I mean, uh, it's a learning curve, but it really works. And there's a lot of opportunities here as well. Uh, the other thing, and I think this is not just true for us, uh, this is not just true for, for industry, but for every uh, with everywhere you look, um, the learning in the learning demand is, is skyrocketing right now. And um, I mean, this has, I guess, has different reasons. Uh, one reason, of course, being that um, we, yeah, we have to adapt, right? So we have to kind of um, uh, yeah, adapt to these times. And, um, and, and that's, that's why a lot of people now start learning uh, even more than they have before. So this is something which, of course, we also have to keep up with. And lastly, and that's probably the most important one, um, of course, we have to be uh, ready for the future more than ever. And that's that's more important than ever. Um, if, if Before, I would say, if you said, okay, what's the future? People would say maybe 10 years or something. Uh, but actually now Corona has actually shown us, no, the future is actually now and uh, the change is happening now and we have to adapt to it. And um, that's that's the most important, one of the most important lessons, I guess. Um, and, and learning new things is definitely a great way to still be ready, um, to, to stay up to date and yeah, and to, to, of course, also improve yourself. And 
so that's something we're seeing and um, which which is really great uh, and and um, I think it really is a really great thing for to see people wanting to improve and to change and um, yeah that's that's would be the end of my presentation and of course uh, if there's any questions feel free Yes, feel free to ask questions. Maybe I can ask a questions um, while others are thinking. Um, I think I can ask the question to both of you, uh, Andreas, uh, Jürgen, Hannes. Um, you all, or your communities were a lot around learning, and I'm also using communities a lot for learning. Um, but where, uh, which activities distinguish an academy from a community? Where is where is the point where the community starts? Networking. I think that's that's the main difference. Um, uh, we have to, you have to give the people um, a chance to network to get to to know the right people they have to know to to solve their actual problem. I think that's the difference. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, from my point of view, uh, like an academy can be an enabler um, and and provide the the basis for learning and the courses and everything. Um, but then you need need a community for the, of the people who are actually taking that up and and as, as I mentioned already, kind of share that and teach themselves and 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 you know um, go and go into that direction. And um, and that of course has to go together hand in hand. So that's that's something which we are seeing, which is really great that um, these people who learn they they share what they learn and and they bring it out into the community. And community, I don't mean in a way of you know like a like a software like not say like a connections or ACE and community, but really the people, the community. Ulrich, in the in the chat has two questions. One is uh, same as for Dativ, like what is the community platform and the digital tools you're using, and the other is what is the team behind the academy? How many people are they full time? Ah, okay. Um, well, uh, for for our community, uh, we have an uh, enterprise social network. Um, it's uh, it's connections. Uh, um, that's what we use uh, for for our community there to, to communicate with the people. Um, and uh, yeah, we we are a pretty small team actually. Um, we are we are worldwide team, so we have um, we have people in different countries. Um, and uh, so yeah, we are working as well in a very digital style, anyways. Uh, even even before Corona. And um, yeah, that, that's that's really great because you have uh, people in different regions and locations, and they can actually also kind of uh, cater to the local needs and see what you know the, the needs in the different regions are, um, and then can react to that. That's really good. Okay. There is another question by Jason. You mentioned that you use gamified learning, uh, and that this uh, encourages people. Can you explain this a little bit more, like how you're doing it, what tools you're using, and so on? Um, Honestly, I'm not sure what what uh, what tools our authors use um, to create that. Um, to be very honest, um, uh, but what 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 the idea behind this is is uh, to make real learning uh, learning uh, more engaging and fun. Um, so to so really create an interaction, and uh, by uh, kind of like having these, of course, like serious games or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, it, it's just it's just you 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 know you're just just receiving stuff, um, uh, but you actually can try things out and and you. Yeah, so, so it makes it really, really like an experience, and and I think we all we all like to play games in our free time some someday sometimes. So, and yeah, well, this why not that work as well uh, if, it, if it makes it more and more interesting. Verena is asking if you produce the learning content yourself or if you use content from the market. Um, I I would say uh, both. We produce a lot ourselves though. Yeah, I think most of the things that are produced by ourselves. And you do it in the in the connections platform, or where's the content located? Um, we have well, we have an LMS um, uh, where where the where the uh, the learning content is in, um, and uh, we use the community to yeah to communicate with uh, with everybody and to uh, to promote when we have new learning offers and uh, when we have webinars and things like that. There was the question about the uh, the gamification or the gamified learning. We had an, another example for that. We just do um, do a skunk award, um, and this award was uh, please show us your worst code you ever have written. Mm -hmm. Well, and, skunk and, is a stinktier in German, like yes, this yeah, stinky yeah. animal. Okay. Yes, a stinky, <laughs> a very stinky animal. <laughs> <laughs> um, and 
they have to show the, the really creepiest code they have, the, the worstest code they ever have written, and it's gone to production. It has to be gone to production. And then they have to explain what is wrong in this code and <laughs> for five minutes. And after that, the audience has 10 minutes time to say what is good in the code. It's not mm -hmm. bashing yeah. by the community, it's just going okay. what is good in the code. And that, that was the, the intention was just to, to show the people, find out the worst things in, in code, but even don't uh, blame it. So look for the good things in code and just learn to distinguish between these both. Very cool. And that was really cool. And we had um, we were uh, doing this for two times, and then both both times we had uh, five attendees, really good uh, software developers who show really bad code. Cool. I just put in the chat. It's like the fuck up night in uh, transferring to software. Cool. Something like that. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, there is another question, uh, Hannes. You mentioned the learning management system or LMS uh, for those who don't understand the acronym. Um, Verena asks: Is the community directly linked to the learning management system? Uh, well, it's a question. What do you mean by directly linked? Um, it's it's two. I mean, it's two different platforms, I would say. But of course, we 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 kind of you know try to get a link between these two. Um, I, I that's why I can say I'm not sure like how the question is, is meant in that way. Perhaps it's like LinkedIn Learning and LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the social network. LinkedIn Learning a learning management system, and you can have yeah. links between them, but they are not deeply integrated or something. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe, but yeah. Falco is asking, do you have open APIs within the company where everyone can develop? That is a very good question. I unfortunately don't have an answer to. <laughs> no, I, I honestly don't know. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, but there was another question uh, regarding the first case. Um, how did you get management attention in the beginning of the community before the first successful event? I mean, I can ask that to both of you again. <laughs> well, I think um, at the beginning we were just under the hood. Uh, it was um, we didn't make any official events, and uh, after then, after we 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 discovered that the community starts to work and that we have really working events, then we gone when we went to the management and told them about that. So the first year was just in hidden a hidden community for the management hidden. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That was a question from uh, Agrabal. Um, I think um, we are like 10 minutes short of our end. So um, I would say thank you to you, both of you. Maybe you can, uh, those who have not answered, been answered their questions, they can contact uh, our speakers of today. Of course. We have their Twitter accounts, their LinkedIn accounts, and so on. So you're welcome to contact them and contact us if you want. Um, but we want to uh, to met, to take your attention a little bit to another event uh, to the to our next uh, co cross company community call that is. Um, I'm sharing this. Yeah, and the next cross company community call. I mean, you might have noticed we are very short of time. We have very interesting topics and very interesting speakers. And we thought we might give them a little bit more time. We might give more room for questions. And so we came up with the idea of uh, um, of hosting a, a little bar camp. So our next cross company community call will be a mini online bar camp edition. You might want to ask, oh, a bar camp, that's usually uh, something for one day or two days, but we will keep it to one uh, and a half hours. So we will have two slots, two parallel slots of 30 minutes for sessions. And let's see how many sessions will come up. But we thought about three to four parallel sessions. So that might be six to eight sessions in a whole. Um, and uh, who will... Uh, come up with the sessions, I guess um, that's you. Uh, we will be very happy to have your session on board. And if you would like to uh, provide us a session, you have some time to think about it. You can start now and uh, use this link over here. There is an Etherpad uh, where everyone can just 
enter their text. So it's a collaborative document. You can just leave us a little note, your contact and propose a session. And um, you can do that until September 18th. Uh, then we will start a selection phase uh, where uh, our future participants will vote which uh, sessions they prefer. We will then, based on this, create a session grid for October 8th. Um, we will publish it on October 1st. And then we can go ahead um, on October 8th and we'll have a wonderful mini online bar camp with your uh, sessions. I think uh, I'm very excited about that because I think there is uh, there are a lot of interesting topics in the community. Um, do you have questions about this? I just I posted the link the link mm -hmm. to the pad uh, in the chat. There are already seven people on it, and you can now start writing. Or after that call, if you have ideas for sessions, you can just put it in. Yeah. Again, if you have questions, organizational questions, anyone, anything. Uh, just contact us with via our Twitter handles or in that or on that document maybe or um, in the community in the Cognion community where there is also our landing patch. I think you can comment there. Um, yeah, and um, we are very much looking forward to October eighth. And um, apart from that, I would like to shift your attention to another thing. Um, we are also working on a community management guide. This is a co-creation project. So I'm in the project, but other community managers as well, uh, with some of which are present here, like Steffi, like Julia, uh, anyone else. The guide um, exists already. The community ma management guide exists already. It was um, being elaborated in 2015 by uh, several company in the uh, context of a bench learning. There was Deutsche Telekom, there was Scheffler, uh, maybe Simon, you can uh, um, add some names here. It has already very uh, great uh, materials in there, but we thought uh, two weeks ago at the Learning Lerno S camp, we thought there, there were a couple of people who thought we could uh, develop this further, add new showcases, add new examples, maybe develop some new sections, uh, look out for some current trend like uh, the Microsoft uh, ecosystem and so on. And also here, if you if you have a project in your company, something you have to work on and, and you're looking for some peers, maybe we can uh, merge synergies here and do something together if you like to uh, just to to contact us uh, and see what the options are, then you're very welcome to join us here as well. So, um, questions about this? I can see Simon, but he's frozen. Can you hear me still? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I just put another link in the chat. Tomorrow there will be, uh, as part of the IOM Summit, which is a digital workplace conference series here in Germany, um, there will be in the afternoon, 4 to 5 p.m. in German language, um, a so-called interactive session with uh, Stefanie from our org team uh, about employee engagement, which is pretty close to, um, to community management. So if you want to just have a look, you can register at the site that I just put the link. And uh, if I was asking where she can find the community management guide that exists already, uh, so far there's a version on uh, GitHub. We push these Lanos guides on GitHub and create PDF uh, versions from it. I will look this up and post the link in the chat in a second. Okay. So I stop sharing here. So um, we have six minutes left and we can still answer some questions. Um, uh, Stephanie, will you post the link to your um, to your interactive session tomorrow? Yes, I'm currently looking for it. Thanks for the promotion, Simon, already. Uh -huh. so. It's a good, a good Friday uh, early or late afternoon session. True. Yeah, maybe can can you also post the link to our um, 
community manage uh, three C three call um, landing page. Yeah. So everyone can look up when will be the next. So they everyone has it on their minds. Next, uh, the call will be on October eighth. Right. I can. I just share my screen. So uh, if you're on this uh, community platform on Connect, it's like community.cognion.de. You can register for free and come in. Uh, there you have this category link, and there's one category for the 3C call. And uh, there's a about uh, category here, and you have all the information about the calls. All they are linked. Every call is like linked here. So if you click on a call from the past, you get the information what happened there, like uh, ZF showing a community case and so on. We always put the recording and the slides, and also the chat protocol. What what happened in the chat? So if you are new to the 3C call, you can uh, take yourself some time over the summer, for example, and uh, re-watch all the calls that we already had. Mm -hmm. And we will put also the recording of this session of today uh, here on the page of the uh, seventh, no, the sixth co uh, cross-company community call. Okay, wonderful. I think. We're done for today. We saved everybody three minutes. Any <laughs> any last questions? Any last recommendations for the evening? What are you up to tonight? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. See you on October 8th and maybe in between um, online. Yep, see you. Thank bye you, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks bye. for the contributions. Bye-bye.